Welcome back to another episode of Learning Unleash the Beast. Now I've been playing Learning uh, Unleash too much. Welcome back to another episode of Unhinging the Beast. And you actually have no idea how much time I have prepared for this episode. If you could call it preparing. I've been on vacation, I've just been casually playing. And that's why there's tips and tricks videos out. Because those are easy to record but hard to come up with and I had some ideas. Anyways. I finally found another vein of diamonds, and this is going to be very useful because, like I said two episodes ago, we are going to be working on multi-block structures, and we need some glass fiber cable. Because gold cable, I think, got nerfed. It used to be 1 EU loss per 4 blocks, and copper cable is 1 EU loss per 6 blocks. Now gold is like 1 EU per 2.5 blocks, and I'm transferring 9 or 10 blocks, and that's a lot of EU loss. Anyways, I digress. And from what I saw, yeah, it's, it's two diamonds. That's the, the bare minimum. I have been strip mining a lot. And this is what I've gotten so far. Lots of redstone, lots of coal. I can almost make two more diamonds. I do need a bunch more coal cocoa. But yeah, if you... There we go. You can see it now. Up in the corner right there. All that strip mining, just to find two diamonds. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, just go back here. Lava's uh, pumped out two layers, which is impressive. I, I thought like, the lava would last a long time. As you can see from the minimap, I did start up my tree farm again. Rubber tree farm. Um, probably don't need it right now. I've also used up these roads. Because, uh, continuing my thought, uh, I don't need the rubber tree farm right now. Because I have plenty of wood. And from all the sticky resin I got from grinding those wood, wood up, I have lots of the thing. You know that thing. Sticky resin that I then extract it. Words! Use them. And I also made these signs to keep me on track because when I'm playing casually I'm usually like watching a YouTube video in the background and then I like go from the base all the way up there and I come down here and I completely forget what I'm doing. So yeah, this is what needed. I'm pretty sure I have all the resources. I should probably store some of this stuff. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I have all if most, if not all, of the resources that I need. Um, dump off my miner's backpack and the redstone. We are going to get some gold and some silver to make some electrum for the thing. Also, I mined out that giant glowstone vein. And, yeah, I've also ground up some of the glowstone dust. So I think there's like Maybe a hundred and fifty blocks of glowstone, perhaps. Um, I also centrifuged up two stacks of lava, so I have electrum, which means I don't need the silver and the gold. Just remembered that I had electrum. I also got a lot of copper and a stack of tin and some tungsten. So not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. But I am gonna do things. With and lost out. Anyways, as I said, I've been playing for some time. And I have gotten. gotten? Is gotten a word? I have accomplished many things. Made a second story, decorated a little bit more, went to the nether, completed the roof, and glass in. As you can see, I have a ceiling, which is half a block lower. But that's just so I can run, run wires in between. Um, I can't remember if I had this before. I don't think I had. Everything is now polished up, and it's also really sad that I don't even have this nice of a setup in my unleashed world. Yeah. I also made a few more uh, thermal generators, went out and mined some Genesis. This is my rubber. And this is my glass, which I need. I need 12. Let's make some glass fiber cable. 
and also some MFEs, but not yet. I also made a wire mill because I was running out of copper. There's up. These are where my two multi blocks are going to be slightly small, so they're going to be touching. I have space for uh, three machines on each if needed. I don't think I'm actually going to get to three machines each in this world. Not, not in this, sorry, not in this world, in this space. Yeah, let's place the glass fiber cables. Um, okay. That didn't connect. Um, I'm going to get a cover. Maybe just like, you know, whatever's on hand. Not aluminum. Come on, there has to be something. Find that. Refined iron plate. It is. I'm going to put a refined iron plate on this so the cable doesn't connect to it. And I don't know if it can explode, but maybe it can. There we go. So now the cable shouldn't connect to it. There we go. And... <sighs> Dang it. I'm surprised that hasn't melted the cable yet. Um, what am I going to do about that? I can get some painting things. Paint. Painter. Which is some wool and some iron. Okay, I'm going to get that ready. Uh, at a later date. But, it is still connected, but just not actually the hitboxes, though. Right. So cables are going to come up here. We're going to place the Blast furnace in the ground. Yeah, the blast furnace is going to be in the ground, which means the MFE is going to be on the side of it. Which means... Um, I guess the MF cable can go this way. Right? And then MFE there. Right, and this is why I needed the two diamonds, because, yeah. I used up nine cables, that's, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to get the painter. Oh, I need ten cables, because I need the painter there, too. But, yeah, let's get to crafting these things. Finally, finally crafting these things. Once again, I'm, for some reason, like, finally... Assembling machine, we are going to get 48 steel plates along with those. That doesn't actually take that long. That is extremely surprising. Um, we have the advanced things and the, the electronic circuits. I'm going to make my nano suit, perhaps this episode, perhaps. Don't remember what I need the pump for. Yeah, I don't remember what I need the pump for. But yeah, we have steel machine hulls coming in. There we go. Let's see what else. We need the machine casings. So we have the steel plates and the aluminum plates. We have the steel machine hulls and the regular machine hulls. And we have the advanced circuits and the regular circuits. So while that's running, let's try and create the industrial blast furnace. Because this is fairly cheap. We just need uh, two induction furnaces and some electronic circuits and another steel machine hull. Which means I need more steel. But I thought I was prepared, I swear. Right, so we need two electric furnaces and two more... I really thought that I was prepared, but apparently not, so I will be right back. Okay, so I finally think I'm ready. MF is still very full. Okay, so we have our automatic electric furnaces, and I just wanted to show them crafting. And I think I'm never going to use machine blocks again. I'm only going to use these aluminum machine hulls, because they're very, very cheap. Two induction furnaces 
And then we need two things in the corner, which I can't remember. Just electronic circuits. Okay. It's a shame you can't make those out of aluminum plates, because aluminum you get from everything, and iron is something you need to mine. You could call this prepared, I guess. Just slightly prepared. Once we get Emmy set up, this is going to be much easier. But that's not going to be until we get our solar panels, which might... No, it probably won't be this episode, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, we should get... We had so many copper cables here. How did I not notice that? <sighs> okay, so it's nighttime, but everything should be sealed off. Bam. 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 Industrial boss furnace. I will craft the grinder off camera once I get, um, let's see, 10 diamonds. That was me being angry at, um, <laughs> at Greg. So I could use tungsten, but tungsten requires a blast furnace of 250. 2,500 Kelvin, which is the blast furnace that I'm building, plus, like, I think you only need the nichrome heating coil for that. But yeah, now let's start crafting the actual, actual blocks. I might need some more aluminum because I overcreated the hulls, but we need that many of those. And I t definitely don't have enough. 3 times 6, 18 more plates. Okay. And I should just be able to go like that. There we go. Now we have steel machine hulls, advanced circuits, and plenty of steel plates. Create a full 32 of those. And you'll find out right now why it is... No, not right now. In just a few seconds. We have our lithium batteries, which is placed wrong, I believe. We have an aluminum machine hull. We have some circuits. Create one MFE. Okay. Up the stairs. Place the MFE there. Or actually... Actually, I don't think I need, I have any need for the extra glass fiber cable, so why don't I just move everything over this way? In there. Unfortunately, I don't have that on me. Well, you'll see what I mean in a sec. Just two more cables. Right. Now, we can place our industrial blast furnace. That can have 128 EU per tick. Good, good. Incomplete machine casing. And time to make the uh, the ice cream sandwich. Which is what I've been... Actually, let's make this one first, because I know there's a specified pattern for this one. And we'll use the extras over there. So, we have that. We have reinforced machine casings with a bucket of water in the middle. There. And then we have the standard machine casings eh, on top. So there's one ice cream sandwich. One ice cream sandwich. And now for the other ice cream sandwich, this one is the other way around. <laughs> and this is the most efficient design that I have found. Because you have no extras. No, you don't... Like, so Greg made a, ch made a change. Where even if your entire um, furnace setup there is made up of the, the the best machine hulls, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, I think they're just called advanced machine hulls. Uh, you won't have enough heat to smelt your tungsten steel, I believe it is. Oh, we actually only need one lava bucket too. So you place a lava bucket here, and there. 
Unfortunately, again, this room is slightly small, so you can't, you can't separate them. But in the real base, they will be separated. So here, we have 2,000 Kelvin. Now, if we add a uh, Canthal heating coil, which we might be able to do, actually. So we might be able to smelt that tungsten and bend it into plates and use that tungsten to make the grinders. <gasps> oh, we might be able to get the grinder this episode. Not raising, not raising your hopes, nor am I raising my hopes. But you get three chrome, chrome, three aluminum, and three refined iron. We got canthal heating coils. We need six chrome. Um, I guess tough luck. We can't smelt the chrome dust, and we get it from ruby dust. So that's one per nine, and we need six. Six times nine, fifty-four ruby dust, which is equivalent. Two five hundred and forty redstone in a centrifuge over fifty four times three fifty seconds. Yeah, not a chance. But that that is an option that I will be jumping on because there's no way I'm getting those rubies. And redstone still is renewable, so I'm not gonna just hack them in. Um But yeah. I'll probably do it that way. But yeah, once you put in the Canthal heating coils, four of them, and the nichrome heating coils, four of them. This requires nickel or ferrous, which are basically the same thing. So this is slightly more expensive, but you can make one at a time, which means you only need to waste four chrome instead of six chrome. So once you have that, you put that in, put that in, and that raises it, each coil raises it by 500 Kelvin, and you get your maxed out 3000 Kelvin thingy, which can smelt tungsten steel. Um, look at that number down here. Nothing else needs more tungsten. That just needs the candela, as I said before. And everything else. Silicon, which we really need. And yeah, uh, these calcium carbonate cells are pretty cool because you get triple your iron. Might need to look into that. Carbon and calcium. Calcium is from bones. Yeah, might look into that. But yeah. This is amazing. I'm going to get some cables, connect it up. We have two ice cream sandwiches upstairs. <sighs> okay. I'll take this. Like, it gives the 10% the, the almost to a, like, an exact number. I'm wondering if there's actually like data inside the block saying that, hey, he got, um, like, for every 10 blocks, you get one. For every 10 blocks, you get one. And there's data stored inside the block that says, yeah, do that. <laughs> I kind of doubt it, but then it's almost every single time, or every time, I haven't really noticed. It's like that, so... Conspiracy. <laughs> um, we can't get it from there. I also learned that railcraft slabs, not half slabs. I think that's one like I I find that really annoying when some people say half slabs because it's it's not a half slab. It's either a slab or a half block. But yeah, railcraft half half blocks or slabs can be placed on top of each other. Did that connect to something? No, it did not. Did that connect to something? I believe it did. Nothing has exploded. That is filling up with power. Um, next MFE is going to be right here. So I'll place the cables there. There we go. Let's start smelting up some uh, silicon. Because I really want to get those cells back. And I kind of want the silicon plates, but that's kind of secondary right now. Silicon, silicon. There we go. We finally have the multi-block structures. We're getting a very good base set up. This is producing lots of power. And I think I should start dumping in redstone, to be honest. Um, yeah. 
what else can we do this episode? Um, we can start working on the miners. Um, I do have uh, a custom valuable ores chart file thing in the initial craft config. I'll put that in the description of next episode because that's when we're going to be focusing on it. But sure, we can make an OV scanner this episode. Or value scanner. This is a very underused item. And I could place iridium as a very, like, like I could place a ridiculous, like, a value of 100, so whenever there's iridium, I could see it. Well, that's kind of cheaty. So I just put it at 10, which doesn't influence it that much. But I'm going to be mining out every single ore, so there's not a problem there. Um, an advanced circuit, um, some glowstone, redstone, some batteries. So yeah, when you right-click on the ground, I right-clicked, that didn't do anything. Because <laughs> I'm not holding anything and you can't see my clicks. But when you right-click on the ground, it scans the area underneath you all the way to bedrock. Come on. All the way to bedrock and does some fancy calculations, which I'm not sure of right now. And it basically gives you the average value of the ores underneath your feet. Which is great. Copper cable, two gold cable, glowstone, one, two, three, four, five. That should be enough. Yeah, so it, it uses some, some fancy formula, and all the ores have values. I changed the values up a little bit. Like, they said that iron was more valuable than gold. Um, in Minecraft, yes, but I'm gonna try and base this off of real life. I think. So gold is more more valuable, and even though in real life diamonds aren't worth much, and the the diamond selling industries own basically all the diamonds and are making them expensive, I put those pretty up high, pretty high up too. Um, what else? I added all the Greg Tech ores. Why did I get? We do need copper. God dang it. I added all the Greg Tech ores, um, all the ores in this mod pack. So if you're pay, if you're okay, so this is a quick tutorial on how to do this. Type an ore and put a space on either side. So space or space, and you'll get all the ores. Now um, you'll need to go mining a little bit before this, so you know which type of copper. This copper, this copper, or if if you're in mod pack, if you're in a mod pack, there's and lots and lots of types of copper. You need to find out which type of copper is your type of copper that's generated in your world. If you're using a custom mod pack that you just kind of threw mods together, there might be all different types of copper. But, um, that's... If you want to do that, go ahead. That's kind of cheaty, though, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you need to find out which one, and you just basically say, hmm, for 14? gold ore, which is 14, you say, like, how much do I want gold ore to be worth? And in the config file, you can type in 14, and then colon the value of it. And then I just went through and put every single one of these ores in. And that took a long time. But now I have a basically complete list. I don't know why I'm emphasizing my words. And of course, I have cable over there. Why am I bringing cable up here? And why am I still making cables by hand? I swear, today... Today is, is not my day. Copper cables. Redstone. Circuit. And I already had... S this is not... This is not going well. We need tin plates. Let's see if I can keep a conversation going for however long it's been and not jump cut. Um, I I can't, so I'll be back. So, one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel is so that I could get better talking skills. And I'm basically failing at that. Why is this not working? Uh, 
colon four, colon four. Do I really need to charge this? Maybe. Yeah, as I was saying, one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel is so that I could, I could improve my talking skills. So far, that's not really happening. <laughs> I'm still pretty bad at talking, keeping up a conversation. And even, even right now, I'm struggling with words to come up with and stuttering off exactly like that. Um, it, it really helps to be pl like prepared. Oh, there we go. But I don't even know. We're fresh out of lava. That's one, that's something. Blast furnace going strong. Plenty of cells now that I can recycle. Um, yeah, let's go test out the SOD scanner. OV scanner. Let's go right here. 60. There's still lots of ores in this area. I did, didn't expect to see that. I also hit level 55. Probably from the last, last cut, but, yeah. Let's scan here. 55. Or maybe like 50 is an average. Or maybe because there's so many ores in this area. Let's go scan where the iridium is and see what number it says there. This does scan a 7x7. So the miner will mine a 7x7. Um... That's, that's basically it. Iridium, right here. 68. It's not, that's not particularly high. And as you may notice, um, this isn't actually draining from my backpack, which apparently is a feature in industrial craft. 67, yeah, that's, the 68 isn't high at all. 65. 56. 58. 78. Um, put a marker here. That's a fairly high ore spot. Yeah, just gonna be mining out this entire desert uh, without actually mining out the desert. So what the miner does, um, it doesn't ruin landscapes. It's like the endothermic, not endothermic, the ender quarry from the new versions of uh, extra utilities, where it only mines the ores, but th in this in industrial craft it actually just mines the ores, and in extra utilities it um, replaces them with dirt, I think, which might be a viable dirt farm, because dirt isn't exactly the easiest thing to get in, like, massive quantities of... easily. Like, say, if you're building, like, an automatic farm, you want an unlimited supply of dirt. That might be a good option. But anyways. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, that might actually be the end of this episode. Is there anything else I have to do? Um... I can start the redstone, putting in there. So I need 540 redstone, which is, uh, 512 plus 38. So 512 is, um, many stacks of redstone. Let's see, 128, 256, 512 redstone, plus... An extra 38. There we go. There's um, all of our redstone. I can take this chest, because we're not using it. And we're going to be centrifuging all that redstone to get chromium, and hopefully get the industrial grinder next episode. So, um, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time as soon as I get to the top of this ladder and place the chest down. Eh. I don't... I didn't need to bring the goddamn chest. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. What happened to my red... 
Sometimes I swear. And thank you for watching.